Damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, episode 310, August 18th slash August 19th, 2022, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. Yep, and uh, as always, so many things we cannot talk about, (laughs) especially related to cakes that make us feel nauseous, right here on the first and the only wrestling podcast. If you guys ever eat cake with buttercream frosting and feel nauseous afterwards, uh, let us know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, we, we need to know if it's the the type of frosting or if it's specifically something in the recipe from this one local grocery store that we <laughs> have both eaten uh, many cakes from and have consistently run into some issues post consumption. <laughs> We're looking to gather some data here. Yes, this is a a data fishing expedition. What a way to start the show. (laughs) Well, there's a lot happening in pro wrestling. NXT Europe is starting. NXT UK is possibly ending slash transitioning into NXT Europe. WWE is doing a show in Wales. WWE is doing a Worlds Collide show. New Japan is uh, had the end of the G1 and are going back to a one night Wrestle Kingdom next year. I think the thing that is really tickling everybody right now, though, is what's happening in all elite wrestling. And CM Punk is maybe big mad with some of the talent. The talent is maybe big mad at CM Punk. There was a report or multiple reports this week that. CM Punk, quote-unquote, went into business for himself during his promo segment on AEW Dynamite this week and took a jab at Hangman Page, which was perceived as a receipt for a jab that Page took at him when they were feuding three months ago. Mm -hmm. There is uh, some... There's a report of dissension in the locker room between former WWE stars and the AEW quote unquote homegrown stars. It is a report that not all is sunshine and unicorns and rainbows in the AEW locker room as we have been led to believe. But. How much of this is work and how much of it is shoot? I don't know. Do you know? Do you have a read on this? <laughs> um, well, we discussed this a little bit before we went on the air, but my my general thoughts are uh, like a lot of things in, in all elite wrestling, a lot of promos, sometimes there might be real life heat or or issues that work their way into the fictional uh lines that are delivered by by the characters on the show obviously we've seen stuff involving mjf and Britt baker and thunder rosa and people like that it's not a completely foreign concept uh i guess yes the fact that it was allegedly a surprise line no one knew he was going to call out hangman page and you know people in the locker room maybe felt like page was put in a really awkward spot by that which, yeah, if that's true, he was for sure. Um, but I also know that uh, CM Punk is a very big fan of Red Heart. I don't think that's a secret. It's not a scoop exclusive to this show. Um, and it, that, to me, last night felt like a 1997 WWF promo. <laughs> Um, it felt like you're you're mixing in a little bit of real life or perceived, in some cases, real life tension uh between between the the people in the company and he took that and used it to not only plug a match with john moxley but also to you know maybe set up something with eddie kingston and maybe to set up another match with hangman down the line um so to me it felt like yeah maybe there's some real life animosity maybe there's some real life 
hurt feelings. Apparently it stems back to a specific line or two that Hangman dropped in a promo uh, against Punk back in back in May. And that, that may have led to a closed doors meeting with with Punk and Hangman and and AEW management. Uh, so maybe that's true. And he's and but my other thought is they've got all out in two and a half weeks. They've got the Arthur Ashe Stadium show a couple weeks after that. They have a pay-per-view in November. Punk might defend the title one time between the Arthur Ashe show and the November pay-per-view. So he needs guys to work with. So maybe even if it wasn't technically in the in the quote-unquote format, maybe he just thought, well, while I'm out here, I'll plant a couple seeds for things down the road that we'll get back to later. And maybe it just caught people off guard because of the way he said it. And the way it played out is he called out hangman page to fight him for the belts and hangman didn't show up and he called him a coward. Now I wouldn't do that (laughs) if I were trying to, you know, make a match, you know, more interesting. I wouldn't uh, call my baby face opponent a coward and have and then prove him to be a coward when he doesn't answer my challenge. Uh, Jim Ross, in maybe his only good line of the night, did at least say like, "Well, I'm not even sure that Hangman's in the building tonight. I'm not sure why Punk is making this challenge or something like this." So yeah, you, know, you maybe you can say he can save face that way. But yeah, I I don't know what to make of it. It feels like maybe it's a little bit of real life animosity mixed into a promo designed to get people talking and that, you know, it's there. And it could also be everything that people are saying it is right. Because CM Punk is famously the meanest human being that's ever walked (laughs) the face of the earth and is not someone that (laughs) has like a large circle of friends. Usually the longer he is in a place, the less friends he has (laughs) uh, historically speaking. So this could all be, you know, this could all be 100% shoot. And every line punk went out there last night was a, you know, direct barb to someone he doesn't like and, and, and all that. And, and my, my only other pause other than punk's love of Bret Hart, that makes me think that we're, we're mixing the shoot with the work, so to speak, is that, you know, there's been whispers of uh, unhappiness or unrest in the AEW locker room over the last couple of years. When have we ever got this much detail this quickly about something that went wrong or that's some big hot button issue in, in the locker room in AEW? I don't think we ever have because AEW generally seems to like to keep a pretty tight lid on that. Um, so usually stuff doesn't come out until either way after the fact, or it just never comes out exactly what happened. Um, so I, I guess that's the other part that makes me a little leery because, you know, from, from Dave Meltzer to the voices of wrestling to fightful, like everybody had some details on this and it could be just that it's such a widely known story that everybody knows what knows the details and everybody's talking about it. So everybody who's a various source for, you know, every reporter had had some color for the for the report. Maybe that's true. Um, and again, maybe it's all true. And I, and again, I wouldn't want to think they were, quote unquote, working the locker room because. But I guess they already maybe kind of did with the MJF stuff earlier this year. So maybe they would do that. So maybe it's a possibility that it's a work, but only CM Punk and Tony Khan know it's a work. I don't know. Like it feels feels like there's a lot of possibilities here, but the fact that, again, I keep coming back to the the 97 WWF-ness of the promo and the fact that we got so much detail from a notoriously tight-lipped company so quickly, just, I don't know, it said, it said something off that went, hmm, maybe there's there's even more to this than what has spilled out over the past 24 hours. We do love hot gossip on this show. Oh, 100 percent. Big, big hot goth <laughs> fans here. Yeah. So it's uh, it's nice that that's going on. Uh, we like to stir things up. And uh, yeah. So 
I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Among the things that Punk said while he was out there, quote unquote, going into business for himself last night, he took a shot at Eddie Kingston. He said Eddie was the second best Kingston he'd ever shared a locker room with. He said John Moxley was the third best guy in his group, which is a common theme for him during his career. He's not the first John he'd beaten for a title in Chicago, or he'd beat for a title in Chicago, and uh, not the best John he'd beat for a title in Chicago. And then Moxley went back at him with, well, we all know you only came to AEW because you ran out of money. All very CM Puck is good friends with John Moxley's wife. And so I assume by proxy proxy at least is friendly and not going to um make an enemy out of John Moxley. And that the fact that, that all of that was mixed in with the hangman stuff and the Kingston stuff just made me think, yeah, this is probably not as big a deal as everyone seems to think it is, but also uh, this all broke while I was asleep today. And so I came to the story <laughs> late and maybe maybe am uh, underestimating uh, how important it is. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's what well, it, the other, I guess, interesting note coming out of it is that they announced they're doing the unification match next week. Yes. And not at the pay-per-view. <laughs> they did a second. They had a scuffle as we used to call it in dog daycare. <laughs> Uh, the 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 lads had a, a brouhaha. <laughs> like spoke a little French. <laughs> I swear, I was thinking last night of a way to work that in today, and I completely <laughs> forgot about it. Yes, uh, they had a scuffle, a brouhaha at the top of the eight o'clock hour, and they had another one at the top of the nine o'clock hour, and then uh, announced that, oh yeah, by the way, this match that we hinted was happening at all out is actually happening next week on free television. Yeah, I mean, it's that. I mean, Punk flat out said it was happening at All Out and talked about wrestling him in Chicago. So, yeah, um, I that's interesting <laughs> because again, AEW doesn't usually do non clean fin. I mean, they won't, they'll do like you know, a heel cheats or whatever, but they don't do a lot of DQs or count outs or no contests. Whereas this was WWE, they do a BS finish and then just rematch them at the pay per view two weeks later. Right, but they but, they very famously have done like one DQ ever in their history. Mm-hmm. They could do it. They could do a draw, True. but your your takeaway coming out of that show last night would be okay. Well, they're doing Punk and Moxley next week. They're doing Punk and Hangman at the pay per view, and then they're probably doing Punk and Kingston in New York at Dynamite Grand Slam two weeks after that. So it's like he's going to mow through three opponents in like four weeks here. Yeah, that that would be <laughs> insane to me. <laughs> like, and I understand we've talked about this. It's a television business. You're trying to, you know, the tele the next TV deal is the most important deal in AEW history and all that. So I understand they want to put big matches on on regular television, but on what is essentially a one week build, you just have to assume another shoe's dropping, right? Uh, unless they, and again, it's like to me the idea. Like Moxley versus Punk at the end of last week's show when Punk came back and they had that standoff, that felt like the biggest match that company could put on. Yeah. And and the, Hangman's never on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Hangman is is in his feelings. Like he was, <laughs> as of last week, he was scheduled to be in the corner of the Dark Order for their run at the trios titles. Right. Um, so it didn't feel like they were setting up. He has been number one in the rankings for like a while, but also so of right. FDR and they aren't getting a title shot at the pay-per-view either. Right. So uh, not that that necessarily means anything, which is again, why I thought, well, maybe he, they're, they're going to wrestle in November. Or they're going to wrestle on TV sometime between the September show and the November show or something. But then they announced Moxley versus Punk next week. And I, and I was kind of flabbergasted by that so um yeah again they could do a bs finish and rematch them they could do a a draw they could do a double count out and then do like a no dq stip at the pay-per-view or something but it's just not generally what aew does um so i'm just 
look, it's a show that will have a lot of eyeballs on it next week. It's if the goal was get you to tune in next week, a lot of people I'm sure will to see what exactly they're going to do, how they're going to wriggle themselves out of this jam that they've 100% created for themselves. <laughs> so, so two weeks in a row, they failed to crack a million and everybody's panicking because they're like, well, they had the biggest star ever come back last week. Uh, and then they had Kenny Omega come back this week and they haven't cracked a million for each one for either show. And they haven't cracked a million viewers for either show. To which I would say nobody knew CM Punk was going to be. In, actually, I knew CM Punk was going to be at the show a couple hours early. Uh, oh. Yeah. Interesting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, but nobody, the public at large did not know CM Punk was going to be on that show. And then this week, they strongly hinted Kenny Omega was going to be on the show. Mm -hmm. They never said Kenny Omega was going to be on the show. So, you know, maybe they do have a ceiling and it's 949,000 viewers or whatever, whatever the number is. But also, they they didn't advertise these, the, you know, two of their biggest stars mm -hmm. were going to be on these shows. So maybe they should be a little less scatterbrained when they when they book things yeah. and advertise things ahead of time. And again, whether this is part of the the work, the shoot or the work shoot, a couple of notes in I think the Fightful report and the maybe the Voices of Wrestling report were that there was some concern of whether Punk was going to be at the building <laughs> on, yes. when, on this past Wednesday night. Yes. Um, which again doesn't make any sense to me because you'd think if he was if the maximum leverage he would have would be the week prior. <laughs> Um, you know, because like he came back and made his big, big return, and then the week after he was just gonna stay. I, maybe that feels like he has more leverage then because he's reintroduced himself and put himself into the top angle on the show and then right disappears, right? Also, something about that just doesn't smell right to me, just because okay, did the guy not get on the plane to Charleston, West Virginia, right? <laughs> like mm -hmm. the office would know. The office would know if he didn't get on the plane to Charleston, West Virginia. The office had to, you know, set up his travel. It's like if he didn't get there and didn't check into the hotel, they would know that. Like what I that that part was seemed overstated to me, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, you know, all of this has been fun because it's you watch you feel like you know maybe an idea of who CM Punk is as a person. <laughs> and then for the past year, he's been smiling and glad-handed and slapping five at ringside with the fans and, and being all Mr. Nice Guy. And then like this, this version of CM Punk rears its head. <laughs> Again, maybe for real, maybe, maybe just in a fictional version of that CM Punk rears its head and I like, have known I have known CM Punk since the late 1970s. <laughs> and every once again, every now and then you get to see it. Oh yeah, there's the guy I know. <laughs> exactly. This is this is what I would call vintage Phil Brooks that we're seeing right now. I have known CM Punk for 15 years. <laughs> I don't actually know him. Don't let this get back to him, please. All right. Nobody listens to the show. It doesn't matter. Actually, a lot of people listen to this. More people than you would think listen to this show. So that's good. true. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, that's AEW. A lot of hot gossip there. Uh, Kenny Omega came back. He wrestled in a shirt, a shoulder brace, and a back brace. I guess people think he might be working, and that's all storyline stuff, and he's probably physically in better shape than he let on last night. But I don't know. I thought he looked fine. I didn't think uh, as far as what he did. Um, I didn't think it was great that he was working in a shirt and wearing multiple braces. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it, it certainly gives the impression. It, I, I'm kind of torn on this because I think the story, if the story is, well, Kenny's coming back and he's not 100% yet and he's rusty and he's working his way up to being, you know, by the time we get to the finals, he'll be. Right. the old Kenny Omega that's fine like that's a story right. that you could tell on the way to the pay-per-view yeah yeah um but if it's yeah if it's just he's he's just wrestling in a shirt from now on then yeah that's that's a little concerning 
Like if it's just, if it's just those, you know, if, if he really needs to wear those braces and, you know, he has a, he had a laundry list of, of, of injuries that, that we, we were discussing, you know, the, the yeah. shoulder, the heel, the knee, the hernia. Yes. Hay elbow. fever. Elbow. Yes. Dance yeah. fever. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did, in any way, like Omega coming back did feel like a big deal to me this week, but a lot of times when I see like the Young Bucks, it feels like they're a vestige from a promotion that no longer exists. <laughs> it's like, I'm not sure what AEW is anymore. And there's guys like the Trust Busters who are getting pushed and Jay Lethal and Satnam Singh and Sanjay Dunn are all over mm-hmm. every show. And Wardlow and FTR and CM Punk and Moxley's been there since the beginning, obviously. But it feels very much to me sometimes when I see the Young Bucks, like they are part of a promotion that no longer exists. I don't know. It's a little bit like when Scott Steiner didn't realize that the main event mafia had broken up in (laughs) TNA because he didn't watch the show. Right. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. No, it is. I do. I do think about that. Like it, like the Bucks still have great matches pretty regularly yeah. and, and everything like the wrestling has not changed, but it is, I think if you look back to that, uh, I saw someone post the other day that like, you know, AEW puts out DVDs of all their pay-per-views. I'm vaguely aware of this only because I'm on the pro wrestling TZ email list and they relentlessly try to hawk stuff to you every day. <laughs> Right. So I, I was just looking back and it's like you look at the poster for the first show and it's Hangman and Jericho and the Bucks and Cody like and Kenny. Right. Like those are the you know, those are the people across like the, the show I went to in Chicago. It's you know Cody and the biggest thing for me. And I don't know if we talked about this on the air, but when AEW came to Baltimore and we were both at that show. When it was over, I enjoyed that show as like a live experience. I thought it was a lot of fun and everything. But when I was when it was over and I was like, man, it really is the damnedest thing that Cody isn't in this company. (laughs) Because every AEW show that you and I and everyone went to in that first year before the pandemic hit, Cody's the guy. He's the main guy in the promote like or one of two or three main guys in the whole promotion. Always and, a feature, always a featured story, always doing media. Mm-hmm. Yep. And less than three years later, <laughs> he is on Vince McMahon's television show. Yep. Like, and moving business in a positive way for them. Yep. Uh, fascinating. And it just, yeah, I think there, there is a, again, which maybe leads into the, the real life animosity of the AEW originals and the, more recent hires um that that's that could i could see why if you've been there for a long time and now your your tv time or your your ring time has been cut in in half or maybe even a smaller fraction than that while you know nxt 2.0 cast-offs are getting you know getting put in, in pushed factions on television yeah, I can see why that would rub you the wrong way. Sure, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kazuchika Okada won the G1. Great. Wrestle Kingdom back to one night this year instead or this coming year instead Thank of God. instead of three nights. January 4th, Wrestle Kingdom, January 5th, New Year Dash. I'm just look, the one the one night six hour Wrestle Kingdoms are not my favorite show. <laughs> Because no. they're six hours long. A lot of wrestling. But at least you can devote one evening or morning in some cases yes. to that show and not three days in one week just to that show. Not to mention, uh, you know, Raw and, and AEW and whatever else wrestling you might watch. It's just you you put that all into one night and I can I, I just feel like I can handle it more, which is funny because I still feel like WrestleMania being two days is better for some reason. Yes. But I but I only want Wrestle Kingdom to be one night. New Year's Dash the next night is fine, but I only want Wrestle Kingdom in the Tokyo Dome to be one night. I think that's totally fine. I think they have less depth. And so 
if you go ahead and put three big singles matches and six undercard tags on one show instead of <laughs> one big singles match and nine undercard tags. It really shouldn't be that difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, two night WrestleMania. And with uh, with Paul in charge, I feel like the chance of the original idea of two night WrestleMania, which is like two, three hour shows instead of two four and a half hour shows or whatever it was that we got this year <laughs> maybe maybe we get that in 2023 fingers crossed two, two three hour shows versus <laughs> two of those shows where the a, a match goes in the ring once every half hour <laughs> it's like oh why do we need a half hour for <laughs> the smackdown tag team title match or whatever <laughs> right None of this, none of this has anything to do with anything. Uh, NXT UK is ending. It's becoming the foundation of of NXT Europe, which is part of uh, Triple H's uh, global localization or whatever the term he came up with a few years ago. NXT UK let some people go today. Nick Khan finally made his way to (laughs) making some. To uh, trimming some of the fat off of the uh, the budget there in NXT UK feels like a reorganization more than a a total uh, reboot to me. I feel like they're still primarily going to be running uh, shows in, in in London, and then maybe once once a year they try France. You know, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. I feel like I do feel for everyone that was cut today, um, but I, this feels less like the absolute gutting of NXT UK and it just going away. Yeah, it feels like we're just we're just trying to put a fresh coat of paint on what is a dead brand. Yeah, um, feels like a an attempt to. Yeah, we're going to. Maybe unify some belts or make some or rename some things and and move yeah. some some of the talent that's been on NXT UK that they think has value over to regular NXT. And then, you know, you start fresh with cheaper talent and maybe they maybe Paul will get his wish and they'll set up, uh, you know, performance centers there and start training people from scratch, too, and not just tiring, you know, the local indie scene. Right. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how all of that plays out. They did bring a bunch of NXT UK people over and shoot some angles on this week's NXT 2.0 TV show because they are running a show. It's going to be NXT versus NXT UK, uh, kind of the season finale of NXT UK, series finale of NXT UK will be the same day as All Out, beginning at 4 p.m. Eastern. So we're just going to have wrestling from 4 p.m. on that Sunday until... At least midnight, mm-hmm. maybe 1 a.m., depending on what Tony Khan feels like doing. It's a lot of wrestling uh, uh, coming the day after WWE Castle. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it's Clash of the Castle. I think it's Clash of the Castle, but it's funnier if you think it's like the ABC proce- procedural show from <laughs> a decade ago, Castle. Um, WWE t- Castle. Drew McIntyre is wrestling television's Nathan Fillion. <laughs> what do you know right. about i know that. the guy who's i know the name of the guy who was on castle that's right yeah all right well done <laughs> abc wanted to be in the nathan Fillion business too because they gave him another show didn't they i think so yes they did he plays like a a, a writer who becomes a police officer or a rookie police officer at like 51 years old or something <laughs> it's very strange I've never seen an episode I'm just familiar with the premise for some reason. Um, yeah, so WWE Castle is coming up as well. Drew McIntyre has a bad back and did not work some house shows this weekend and may not be working house shows in the build to WWE Castle because of the bad back. He went out and they made him wrestle with Kevin Owens for like 22 minutes on Raw. <laughs> it, it, was, it was good. It's a good match. They had uh-huh. a good promo beforehand as well. Um, there's a mix of good wrestling and good 12 minute matches that they give 22 minute ma- 
22 minutes to on Raw, mm-hmm. I feel like, in the last couple of weeks. Um, but uh, they, Drew McIntyre being banged up, I, I don't... I think Drew is going to lose in the UK. I think... <laughs> think of the heat, brother. If, it feels like it's Triple H and Sean's company. Of course, the hometown guy's losing. They built, you know, they built this thing around Drew. And yet at the same time, if the guy's banged up and I, I don't know, it, it feels like Drew McIntyre is not big enough of a star to be the guy to take the belt off Roman Reigns after two years or whatever the number is right now, you know, three years, three years, two years, two years. Feels like Um, 10 years, but yeah, yes, it's only been two. Yes. He also doesn't defend the title very often, which doesn't help, but um, any feelings about whatever we are here, week three or four of the, the, the Paul Levesque uh, creative reign thoughts on WWE castle coming up. Uh, Drew McIntyre being the guy to beat Roman, Drew McIntyre losing like David Boy Smith at that October 1997 pay per view. What do you think? Uh, what do you think? All things WWE right now? Yeah, uh, just just quick mention. Shawn Michaels is now the VP of Creative. Sure. In this company. Yep. So you're g darn right that the British guy is losing <laughs> at this show. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I think the shows are largely speaking better but also it's it's what you said it's like yes there's more of a focus on in-ring action which is good because i i have this idea that most people watch wrestling shows to see wrestling sure Uh, famously i just like i don't think we've ever talked about this anecdote on the show but in like 1999 wcw conducted a study of you know the (laughs) layman wrestling fan and what they wanted more of once they started really getting shellacked by WWE. And uh, the overwhelming response was that they wanted more wrestling matches (laughs) on the wrestling show. Yes. Um, Yeah, of course you want the matches to mean something. You want there to be a story behind the matches, et cetera, and so forth. But by and large, I'm glad that there is more wrestling on the wrestling show. I do agree that a couple of these longer matches feel like, man, maybe we could have shaved five minutes maybe we had to go go through one fewer commercial break um yes. but by and large i appreciate that there's more focus on in-ring talent uh they've brought some people back none of which interest me in the slightest <laughs> carrying would... cross dexter loomis top dollar <laughs> ashanti theodonis yes uh yeah all the stars are here um <laughs> And like whatever, good for them, you know. <laughs> I'm I'm happy people are getting jobs back, but uh, you know, none of those people are interesting characters to me. And speaking of Drew, and you you put me in an odd position here because long Uh-oh. long time listener of the show Uh-oh. are aware that I am not the biggest fan of of Drew McIntyre as a wrestler. You've mocked his lack of charisma by mm-hmm. referring to him as Mr. Charisma. Mr. Excitement, yes. Yeah, uh, yes, my bad. Yes. Uh, you know, I think he seems like a really nice guy. I've known him for 15 years. <laughs> seems yeah. like a seems yeah. like a wonderful guy. He's a guy, he'll always be a guy. He he <laughs> would I would just say if I were running a wrestling company, I would want him on my show. Because he's good looking and he has a nice physique and he's tall Whoa. and he's well spoken and he's a guy you can send out to do media. And he's Whoa. a guy who I would have work with my top guys. <laughs> you know, like how like what Triple H should have been in his career. <laughs> That's how I yes. feel about Drew McIntyre. <laughs> he he, w- he would never be the guy in my company. He would be a guy who works, he would be in like a Baron Corbin spot <laughs> in my wrestling company. Oof. Like he would be the okay. guy who works with the top guys occasionally, uh, sure. but he would never ever be a top guy. For me. That all being <laughs> said, <laughs> that all being said, if I were, if I single handedly beat the drum for WWE to do a stadium show in the UK for years, and I finally got it, and I'm main eventing that show against the biggest full time star in the company, 
And they told me you get, I got to TV and they tell me you're getting laid out by Carrie and cross tonight. <laughs> and then the next week yeah. you're getting laid out by the Usos. And then the next week you're getting laid out by the Usos and Kevin Owens. I would quit. Yeah. <laughs> I would go home. <laughs> like, what are they doing to this poor guy? Other than, yes, making him wrestle long matches right after he had to take a weekend <laughs> off of house shows because he's all banged up. Like, are they trying to, like, teach him a lesson? Are they trying to, like, devalue him? Like, is his contract coming up and they think he wants to leave? Like, what are they doing to this poor fella? <laughs> I, I was confused when they had the Usos lay him out on SmackDown. It'd be like, look, man. He has he has been given more credibility from their booking than most people. Mm-hmm. But anyone being booked against Roman Reigns needs to be booked like a unstoppable superhero mm-hmm. on the path to the title, not to be laid out by the Usos, who are who have been protected have been protected since they've been put in Roman's group and. Yeah, have held have held the tag titles forever now, but still, you're getting laid out by the tag team champions in a company that has put <laughs> little to no value on the tag team titles for three decades. Right. I just, I genuinely felt bad. Like I was upset on Drew's <laughs> behalf when I when I saw him get laid out by Carrying Cross and then get laid out by the Usos. He did get to like get his heat back a little bit on the Usos on Friday. But yeah, then they in another segment. Yeah. Right. Uh, but then they laid him out again with Kevin Owens on Monday <laughs> and left yeah. him laying again. It's like it's not even it's not even the guy he's wrestling that keeps leaving him laying. It's no. it's the guy's lackeys and some other guy. <laughs> like yes. to me, that segment was far more about reestablishing Kevin Owens as a top guy, which is clearly like a mission statement of Paul's new regime. That they right. want him to be a serious top guy again, which great. I think Kevin Owens is fantastic in, in that role, and I'm very happy to see him back there. But right now, he's not wrestling for the world championship at a stadium show in two weeks. <laughs> Drew is. <laughs> so what the hell are we doing? <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. And yet they've sold like fifty thousand tickets for each night of WrestleMania so far. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of nuts. Yeah, I this mean, thing is going to keep succeeding uh, uh, in spite of itself. Yeah, and again, maybe things will get smoothed out. And this is Hunter dealing with like residual creative that he feels he has to pay off from before right. he took over. And maybe he's just not high on Drew versus Roman as a match. And so right. he's kind of already focusing on what he's going to do after that match is done. But yeah, as of now, I... <laughs> WWE has put me in the very odd position of having to feel (laughs) (laughs) have to like beat the drum for Drew McIntyre top baby face because I can't believe what they're doing to him this close to the show. I get it if they're feeling the. I mean, I don't get I I don't get it. And there are better ways to to accomplish what they I think want to accomplish. But it's like, okay, well, Roman's never on TV, so we have to keep this feud alive somehow. Uh, let's just do some stuff. Uh, all right. Well, how about Drew just talking every week or something? As you mentioned, he's very well spoken. Yeah, and you just have him win matches. <laughs> Put yeah. him in matches against guys that you don't mind beating. Yes. If you don't want him to beat the Usos, if you don't want him to beat Kevin Owens, maybe don't book him against those guys. <laughs> what happened to Commander Aziz? <laughs> How about he? How about he beats Commander Aziz? <laughs> Isn't he working the coconut loop in NXT again now? I don't know. I think he was <laughs> he was Cora Jade's bodyguard for a weekend a few weeks ago. Oh man! <laughs> what do you think of? By the way, since we do love hot gossip, yeah. Do you have an opinion on the Braun Breaker Cora Jade as a couple? I don't know enough about either of them as a, as human beings to make a judgment on this. Is, but is at least an, it's somewhat age appropriate. He's like gonna... he's like twenty four. She's like twenty one. Yeah, I mean that's that's <laughs> okay. I guess <laughs> <laughs> I don't know enough about who they are, even as television characters, to really to really have an opinion on this. Much less to who's as to who they are as uh, as real people. So sure, I wish them sure. well. <laughs> 
yeah my primary concern typically with wrestling relationships is are they age appropriate mm-hmm. i feel like 24 21 24 and 21 is pretty good yeah no i think that's <laughs> that's fine um uh... <laughs> I mean, it's better than when, I mean, they paired up Dex, 43-year-old Dexter <laughs> Loomis with, with like, 25-year-old Indy. Yeah, which is starting again. Mm-hmm. They uh, they teased that with, uh, with, B, with uh, what's it called, B Priestley, a uh, Blair Davenport on, uh, on NXT this week. Yeah, Dexter and, uh, and Indy is, could be starting again. So, so is Indy going to show up during next week's... Uh extremely subtle Dexter <laughs> Loomis it's a shoot brother run in I don't I don't know I think they've told all the stories they could tell with Indy in NXT she doesn't really fit what they're doing there right now even though she should mm-hmm. <laughs> being being young and inexperienced and still still needing some seasoning as a pro wrestler but also, it probably wouldn't be the worst thing for her to get out of there and get up onto the main roster. I saw she just turned like 26 or something today, and it's just, I, that doesn't seem possible. <laughs> it's like a, a child. But every week they were doing this stuff with Dexter Loomis, like, like they do skits in the background of promos that you're supposed to like. It's like a treasure hunt or a scavenger hunt. Mm hmm. Or where where's Waldo is happening in the background of promo segments with Dexter Loomis doing stuff, or he gets tackled by security guards every week, and I think they think they're getting Dexter Loomis over with this, mm-hmm. and I they think they're getting Dexter Loomis over with this. I think Dexter Loomis getting tackled by security guards every week makes him look like a huge geek. I. I just don't understand why, because all the other NXT people just kind of walked back onto the show. <laughs> why does he have to come through the crowd? Is there, is there something wrong with his paperwork? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's possible. It, it's just bizarre to me that they think, yes, this will help. This will get him more over. It's like we see guys mow down security guards every week. <laughs> this guy, this guy gets tackled by them every week. <laughs> like, yeah, but, he, but this is a, a fake wrestler getting tackled by a shoot security guard. So of course he he's too oh. weak to defeat a real security guard. Well, there there is that element to it. But like, are we All seriously? Right. Is the point that he's going to be like a serious character again? It, because I think. <laughs> I didn't think we, so. Didn't we kick the tires <laughs> on De- Dexter Loomis, angry serial killer, serious character for like a year, and it was some of the worst television NXT ever did. And then they turned him into a comedy character, and it was generally pretty well received. That's how it went. Yeah, but uh, it certainly appears that he's uh, stalking AJ Styles now or something. That's... All right. Well, I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, we've covered quite a lot. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I think that uh, that about covers. They they can say wrestling on the show. That was uh, everybody got all hot and bothered about that this week. <laughs> yes, every, everyone was very flustered. <laughs> they got a case of the vapors. <laughs> took a everyone cold. Was, cold. <laughs> everyone took a, a, a handkerchief and started dabbing their forehead. <laughs> Waving their hand in front of their face as if they're cooling themselves off. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. these are wrestlers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're wrestlers in a wrestling ring. Let's wrestle. Yep. Oh, boy. Yes. God, yeah. it is, wrestling the bar twi- is just wrestling under- twi- <laughs> underneath the earth. <laughs> yes. It really is. It really is. But yes, wrestling Twitter got very horny for that this week. <laughs> Great. All right, well, until next time, everybody, and I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Adios. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. I uh, I 
chipped a tooth this week. Oh Lord, that's not good. <laughs> it's not. It's not ideal. Uh, I was chewing a piece of gum. Oh Lord! And I like was you know bit down with my front teeth, and uh, my like yeah. my tooth on the bottom just heard something pop, and I was like, Ugh. "That's probably not good." Yeah. <laughs> and then I like pulled the gum out. I was like, "Oh, there's a there's a piece of my tooth in that gum." Oh Lord. So, so I went to uh, the dentist. I got like a pretty quick turnaround on the dentist appointment, like the next day. Yeah, and uh, they they do the fu- the first funny thing was they do. I don't know when the last time you've been to the dentist was, but have you? I don't want to ever, answer that. Have you ever done the <laughs> X ray where it's like a big like you stand up and it like swirls around you? Uh no. Okay, yeah, that was new to me as well. Uh, <laughs> Um, and so I, so I'm biting down the first thing I'm, it has like, apparently like the, the part where you bite is stationary. It can't be yeah. moved. Yeah. So I'm like hunched over. I'm not a, for those listening, I'm not a particularly tall man. I'm like five eleven, six foot, maybe. I don't know. Um, so like, I'm not a particularly tall man, but I was too tall for this. So I'm like hunched in and then I have to like arch my back in such a way so that the the uh the scanners don't hit me in the back as they cross over so that was funny and then we you know we do the cleaning and they they do the appointment she explains to me like why this maybe happened it has to do with like the way my bite works right um and all that it's like okay and then she's like she threw out a couple of options finally this is all the hygienists very nice person all right. Uh, and then the dentist comes over, talks to me for literally 60 seconds, <laughs> looks in my mouth for approximately five seconds and goes, what if we just did a root canal on all of his front teeth and replace all of them? Because that would fix the bite. And, and, oh. and I was like, he's like, well, you want straight teeth, don't you? And I was like, yeah, but like... <laughs> I feel like the, the other lady was talking about Invisalign and you're talking about tearing out all of my teeth and starting over. And <laughs> I just, I have a little bit of whiplash right now. <laughs> uh, and so he leaves because he has to go do surgery. <laughs> so I, I get to talk to him for about 90 seconds. And then the, the hygienist kind of, she's like, well, so that's her option. We could do what he suggested, which is basically replace all of your front teeth, which would theoretically correct the problem that caused the tooth to crack or chip or whatever right right because you know i apparently when i bite down my top teeth put a lot of pressure on my bottom teeth so okay she's like so you could just get it filled but then this could happen to you again you know sometime in the future i was like okay right she's like or we could do the option he suggested where they rip out all your teeth (laughs) and start over and put you know caps and crowns and whatever in and just make your smile straight and for so you would have less pressure on it so okay she's like well i'm gonna have the uh receptionist go over the pricing options for you and i was like yeah i feel like the fact that you're not telling me what the pricing options are tells me that i'm not gonna be able to afford this (laughs) uh so i go out and she's like so here are the options uh your insurance pays uh 1500 dollars per year uh so you already right. used like 300 of that on this visit. <laughs> so you have like $1,200 right. left for the year. I was like, okay. Uh, right. After that, after the $1,200, the procedure that the dentist wants to do to you would cost $8,000. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I went, okay. And what's the other option? <laughs> it's like, well, the yeah. other option is we would just do fillings on your the front tooth and then i have like a couple other cavities she's like but just do fillings on all those there is one in like my back molar that they're like the only thing we would do to this is a root canal so right maybe would still need one root canal but the end result of that was like i would have to pay like 130 dollars out of pocket (laughs) i was like right she's like so take this and think about it and then get back you can call (laughs) us you can call us later in the week once you thought right. it over, I was like, all right, I'm going to think over whether or not I want to spend $8,000 <laughs> or, uh, or 
would go or and she was like well if you don't want to I, and i asked i was like is there is there like a financing option or anything like right or can right. we do this like a little bit at a time like right is there any right. way we get this where i'm not expected to pay eight thousand dollars <laughs> so the other <laughs> the other the other funny part was i so as she's like doing the because she did like a regular cleaning on me while while we were doing right. this and she's like she's like you know like it looks like you do a really good job of brushing and she's like right it looks like you floss i was like well i use those little sticks she's like yeah that's fine that's yeah you know i was like i was like she's like yeah you don't have a lot of plaque your gums are really healthy but you do have yeah. three cavities and you need a root canal and <laughs> i was like right. so what you're telling me is this is all bullshit <laughs> I've been doing right. a really good job taking care of my mouth on my own, but it doesn't matter unless I come to the dentist once every six months and you wave your magic wand on my teeth. My teeth will just will just rot no matter what. That's what I feel like I right. found out. Four thing, exactly. Four things have still gone wrong, even though, <laughs> even though you've done everything right. Great. Right. Great. Wonderful. Father time kills all of us. That's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to watch Impact. I at least have to monitor it. <laughs> so by monitor it, I mean, I'm going to put it on my laptop and put like, if there's a nationals game on or something, like put that on the big screen and then uh, try to pay as little attention to impact as possible and just make sure when it's over, whatever two news books or whatever mm-hmm. need to be done, I'll do. <laughs> You're monitoring the situation in the way that, like, the CIA, CIA monitors a democratic election in Venezuela. <laughs> like, you precisely. We're, we're paying attention, but only like the minimum <laughs> amount we have to. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly my my take. Yes. Love it. All right. All right. Love you, pal. All right. Love you too. Bye. Bye. I try to keep on keeping on.